Come along then. As a kid growing up in England in the 1970s and 80s, the British science fiction series Doctor Who was a staple of my weekly television viewing, and the programme had been hugely popular in the UK since its introduction on the BBC in 1963. This series chronicles the adventures of a Time Lord known as the Doctor, an extraterrestrial being who possesses a human form. The Doctor explores the universe in a time-travelling spaceship called the TARDIS, the exterior of which looks like a blue police box, and the Doctor does battle with all kinds of alien foes, fights to save civilizations, and is always helping people in need. Do you travel much? Throughout Doctor Who's decades-long run on British television, the concept of regeneration allowed the producers to frequently recast the central character with the various iterations becoming known as the First Doctor, the Second Doctor, the Third Doctor, and so on. I grew up watching The Fifth Doctor, who was played by Peter Davison from 1982 to 1984. And while I do enjoy this actor's interpretation of the character, at that time the BBC was also airing frequent reruns of The Fourth Doctor's episodes. And like so many viewers of my generation, Tom Baker's portrayal of Doctor Who has remained my favourite version of the character. Not fit. I'm the doctor. No, doctor. I'm the doctor, and I say that you're not fit. You may be a doctor, but I'm the doctor. The definite article, you might say. Given my nostalgic feelings towards the Tom Baker era of Doctor Who, I have wanted to add a small representation of these characters to my action figure collection for a very long time. Yet collecting the perfect assortment that I wanted for my display was a treacherous task until recently. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. Being a predominantly vintage toy collector, I'm naturally attracted to the Denny's Fisher Doctor Who range, which was first introduced in Britain in the mid-1970s. This Doctor Who action figure was manufactured in the same style as the popular Mego figures of the era, and the line included a TARDIS, the Doctor's companion Leela, and the Doctor's faithful robotic pet, K9. This range also included three enemies of the Doctor, the Dalek, the Cyberman, and the giant robot. From outer space, the famous TARDIS brings Time Lord, Doctor Who, and the amazing Leela, ready to do battle against their mighty enemies, the fearful Cyberman, the giant robot, and one of the deadly Daleks. Whilst Leela covers him, the Doctor reaches the TARDIS in time and disappears to escape from the dark. Doctor Who, Leela, the fearful inhabitants of outer space, and the TARDIS, from Dennis Fisher. Fantastic. As much as I appreciate this line of Doctor Who action figures, they're just far too expensive for my tastes. The Denny's Fisher Doctor Who range features some very rare and highly desirable pieces, and they command exceptionally high prices on the secondary market. While I've certainly paid through the nose for some of the more rare items in my vintage toy collection, I reserve these purchases for the toy lines that are closest to my heart. And although I really enjoy Doctor Who, it's more of a fringe interest, and I'm definitely priced out of the Denny's Fisher Doctor Who range when there are so many other growl pieces I still need from franchises like G.I. Joe, Star Wars, and Action Man. In the mid-70s, the Palatoy Company introduced a very nice talking Dalek toy, and then added a talking canine in 1979. But these were the only two Doctor Who-related figures that Palatoy made, and without an action figure of the Doctor to go with them, you can't exactly build a collection around them that makes sense. The next range of Doctor Who action figures released were produced by a company called Dapol, who first started making these toys in 1988. When this line first launched, it was focused on the Sylvester McCoy era, because he was the actor playing the Doctor on television at the time. And while they did produce the fourth Doctor figure, this line is very cheaply made and the figures are quite ugly, so it's an easy pass for me. Well, I hate goodbyes. I just slip away quietly. Well, now, Doctor, you can't go. Can't? Can't? There's no such word as can't. There was also a line of die-cast minifigures produced by Corgi, but with these looking more like toy soldiers, they don't really fit in with the rest of my action figure collection. The next range of Tom Baker Doctor Who action figures to be produced were released in the early 2010s by the Biff Bang Pow toy company. These figures were also manufactured in the same style as Mego action figures, and even though I am a collector of vintage Mego, if I'm going to collect more modern action figures, I would prefer it if they had superior sculpting and paint applications, as opposed to modern figures that are simply made to look vintage. So that rules Biff Bang Pow out of my collection. Now we get to the incredibly expansive range of Doctor Who action figures from Character Options Limited. This company has held the master toy license for the franchise since 2005, when the Doctor Who series saw a successful revival on television and it pleases me to no end that this line is being produced by a homegrown British toy company. 
Well, naturally enough, the only country that could be trusted with such a role was Great Britain. Well, naturally. I mean, the rest were all foreigners. Well, exactly. Over the last 18 years, this toy line has gone very deep into Doctor Who, not only producing characters from each new TV series, but also going through the Doctor's back catalogue by producing very nice renditions of every Doctor and a vast cast list of other figures and creatures. In fact, this range has gone so deep that it's a quite daunting task for newbies wanting to jump into this line so late in the game. When I finally decided to make the plunge, I opted to collect the characters from Tom Baker's first Doctor Who story, a four-part miniseries simply titled Robot. That way I could be somewhat restrained and keep the collection within the boundaries of a relatively small cast. Another major draw of the Robot miniseries is its relationship to my beloved Palatoy Action Man toy line, but more on that later. With such a large number of different Fourth Doctor action figures available from character options, I thought my choice was going to be a difficult one, until I learned of a fairly recently released two-pack of the Doctor and the Robot. This set includes what is, in my mind's eye, the quintessential Tom Baker Doctor Who outfit, complete with his trademark hat and scarf. Would you like a chili, baby? These figures stand around five and a half inches tall, and they come with a decent amount of articulation. Sure, the posability of these figures is inferior to the articulation that comes with the likes of Hasbro's Marvel Legends series, but it's also worth pointing out that Doctor Who isn't a comic book superhero, so there's no real requirement to twist him up into a superhero landing pose. Where character options really excels, though, is in the deco and the sculpting. The paintwork on this figure's shoes, tie and scarf is impeccable, and the sculpting on the face is superb. Mind you, I think the nose is a definite improvement. Despite my high praise for this figure, there's one key element that stops it from being perfect. And that is the lack of a sonic screwdriver accessory, an omission made all the more frustrating by the fact that the right hand seems to have been sculpted in a pose, deliberately designed to hold the Doctor's signature device. Unfortunately, while character options used to frequently include the sonic screwdriver with their Doctor Who action figure offerings, they seemed to stop adding the accessory several years ago. I'd like to save my thoughts on the robot action figure for a little bit later in the video, so for now, let's move on to the Doctor's allies. The paranormal and extraterrestrial investigation organisation known simply as the UNIT feature heavily in the robot miniseries, so the first figures I wanted to add to the collection after I acquired the Fourth Doctor were members of this unit. But character options haven't made that mission easy. The first two figures I acquired were Sergeant John Benton and a basic unit soldier from the Terror of the Zygons 3-pack that also included a Fourth Doctor wearing a Scottish tartan scarf and a tam o hat. Once again, the sculpting and paintwork is top-notch, and I love the Sterling SMG accessories. However, the figures are wearing camouflage smocks, as they did in the Terror of the Zygons episodes, whereas in the Robot miniseries, the soldiers are dressed in all green. You can pick up a couple of unit soldiers dressed in all green in the Claws of Axos 3-pack that also includes a version of the Brigadier. What can I do to entertain you till my friend the Brigadier arrives, eh? <laughs> a little song, eh? A little dance, perhaps? Not just a little dance? Anyone for cards? Don't just stand there, you idiots! Get him! The problem with this set is the soldiers have been given modern M4 assault rifles that weren't even in service in 1975, and not the SLRs or Sterling SMGs used on the television show. So while the unit soldiers didn't wear camo smocks in the robot miniseries, at least they are accurate to the time period, and therefore the figures included in the Terror of the Zygons 3-pack are my preferred option. When it comes to the unit's leader, there are, once again, a number of different action figures available. Unit is commanded by Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, a long-running character in the series who works very closely with the Doctor. I'll show that wretched woman. This action figure is available in a host of different uniform types, but the one I wanted was included in a third Doctor set that was released several years ago. This version of the Brigadier depicts the character in his field uniform, complete with British officer's cap, woolly jumper and binocular accessories. When I sought out this figure though, I learned of another issue that comes hand in hand when collecting Doctor Who action figures from character options. And that's the fact that any discontinued sets, no matter how recent, command high prices on the secondary market. And I paid way more for this figure than any of the other characters I picked up. The Robot miniseries also features one of the most popular companions the series has ever cast, Sarah Jane Smith, as portrayed by the actress Elizabeth Sladen. Sadly, character options is yet to produce a Sarah Jane figure adorned in the light blue dress that she was wearing in the Robot episodes, and there are very few alternatives to choose from. I decided to go with the Sarah Jane Smith figure from the Companions of the Fourth Doctor 3-pack, that also included Romana and Romana 2. 
This Sarah Jane figure is dressed in the camouflage trousers and dark green jacket that she wore in Genesis of the Daleks and Revenge of the Cybermen. And while the outfit is vastly different to the costume worn in Robot, at least she fits in well with the unit characters. Okay, now I'm ready to discuss the titular character from Tom Baker's first Doctor Who story, the Robot. Who are you? Why are you here? While the production design of this character might seem somewhat cheap and cheesy by today's standards, this costume blew audience minds when it first appeared on the BBC in 1975. And the robot has become almost as recognisable to Doctor Who as K-9, the TARDIS or the Daleks. When I first handled this toy version of the robot, I could immediately tell that the designers had poured their heart and soul into its creation. This figure is superbly designed, with impeccable sculpting and paint, and the attention to detail is incredible, from the various screen accurate bolts on his chest, to the circuitry inside his forearms, to the pipework that runs between his neck and back. Character options have nailed every detail. Blimey, he even comes with a screen accurate disintegrator gun. Enemies of humanity are attacking us. You must take this gun and destroy them. No! Sadly, this figure's articulation is very loosey-goosey, making the robot difficult to pose. Yet somehow this makes the toy seem even more screen accurate, since the costume used on the show appeared to flop around all over the place. When the Doctor and the unit finally come face to face with the robot in the third episode, the Brigadier deploys a tank in the hopes that it would take down this menacing threat. And the producers infamously decided to use an actual Palatoy Action Scorpion tank to stand in for a real tank on screen, using a filming technique known as Force Perspective. The overall result is quite laughable today, but I do really enjoy the notion of a Palatoy Action Man toy making its way into a high profile BBC television production. Interestingly, this isn't the only connection between Action Man and the Fourth Doctor, with Tom Baker also voicing a Palatoy television advertisement for the Space Rangers. Searching for the mysterious Gargon, the intruder has already been spotted by Action Man's evil eyes. <laughs> The Action Man team set off in a grim race against time, but they are already too late. The dreaded Gargan has been unleashed upon humanity by the intruder, and it's up to the Space Rangers to stop him with their laser gun. With one blast, they halt the maddened Gargan in its tracks. Action Man! Another job well done by Action Man. Of course, I also wanted to add a TARDIS to this focused collection of Doctor Who action figures, and Character Options sells these in sets with the corresponding Doctor action figure. However, I couldn't find a fourth Doctor TARDIS at a price that I felt was reasonable. But then I thought, well, I can't get a Sarah Jane Smith action figure in the correct costume, and the unit soldiers are all wearing camouflage smocks, so how accurate does the TARDIS really need to be? I finally landed on the second Doctor's TARDIS that comes with the Patrick Troughton action figure. And while this version is produced in a much darker blue, and there are a number of design differences, it'll do for now until I can find a more screen accurate edition that doesn't break the bank. At this point I had acquired pretty much all the different characters I wanted for my collection, but I couldn't stop myself from adding a couple of Daleks because they are such an iconic symbol of the brand, and even though the Daleks didn't appear in the first Tom Baker story, I just felt that no Doctor Who collection could ever be considered complete without a few of the Doctor's main antagonists. I went with the Planet of the Daleks 2 pack because I really liked the darker colour scheme used, and considering that these characters have remained largely unchanged throughout Doctor Who's almost 60 year run, You've got to have a few Daleks in the collection. Now am I done collecting Doctor Who figures from character options? Most likely not, as I'd like to add a nice canine to the roster, and Davros is a must have. That power would set me up above the gods! And through the Daleks I shall have that power! Because Genesis of the Daleks is my favourite Doctor Who story, but in the meantime I have thoroughly enjoyed piecing together this small but essential core grouping of Doctor Who action figures. Doctor, you're, you're being childish. Well, of course I am. There's no point in being grown up if you can't be childish sometimes. I understand that many of you may be reluctant to jump so late into a line that's as expansive as this. But the Doctor Who figure offerings from character options are mostly excellent, and they look great on display. So my advice is to pick up new sets as they're released and before they go up in price. 
and do what I did and begin with a very focused collection from your favourite Doctor's era. So thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out some of our other toy retrospectives you can click the links up here or subscribe to the channel by clicking here or consider supporting us on Patreon where you'll get access to hours of exclusive content. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and I'll see you in the next video.